take a look at this. This is the new Castle Creations BEC. What does BEC stand for? It stands for Battery Eliminator Circuit. Now, why do you need one? Well, let's say you've upgraded the servo in your car, perhaps in your trail truck, your crawler, your fiscal car. Well, that servo might require a lot more power. And what this does is it helps supply that servo with the power that it needs. Now, these are the new 2.0 versions. This is the lighter weight version. Uh, a lot of people use this actually in, in aircraft, helicopters, uh, uh, airplanes, duh. And um, it can be used in cars as well. So if you're looking for a lighter weight version, then this is the version you go with for the new 2.0s. This actually just weighs 21 grams. The other one that a lot of car guys are going to be interested in is the WP. Now, as you can see, it comes in a nice aluminum case here. Uh, it's got the dual leads. Both of them have the dual leads, and this is your power supply. This gets hooked up to your battery right here. Now, what's really nice about these is they're programmable. You could use the Castle Link system to plug this in and control your voltage. So if you want to play around with how much voltage that servo is getting, you'll be able to do it with the new 2.0 version. Now, just for ha-has, yeah, I said ha-has. Here's the original version. This is the 10 amp version. These new versions are 15 amp for this one and 14 amp for this one. So they have a huge power range to them. And again, they're fully tunable. Now, what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to go over how to install one in your car. Let's go to work. I'm set up over here on my workbench with one of my Project Yetis. Now, this has an aftermarket high voltage Futaba servo in it kind of notice when running it that the servo doesn't really have the holding power I'm looking for. So this is where the BEC is going to come in handy. Hopefully it's going to deliver the power that this servo needs to really hold the wheels. Now before I get into the installation, I kind of want to talk about a few more features that these new BECs have. What's really nice is it's got a wide input range, 2 to 14S max, which is basically 6 volt to 58.8 volts. Uh, the lightweight version of the BEC has a 14 amp peak output current, and the WP that I'm going to install on here is 15 amp. Now the adjustable output voltage is 4.75 to 12 volts, so you got a nice range in there to use your castle link to program it to whatever you feel your servo needs. Now just remember when adjusting your voltage, the higher you increase it, the more heat will potentially generate, and as you know, heat is harmful for any type of electronic. Now let's talk about the installation. So of course, you're gonna to need to stick this somewhere inside the car. So you're probably gonna need some two-sided tape and of course, some scissors to cut the tape. Uh, on my particular car, I am going to short, use this opportunity to shorten up some of the wires here. You could actually solder the BEC wires right up here at the battery connector, but I'm gonna shorten things up. So I'm gonna use some cutters and exact them. I have to strip away the insulation. Uh, you're gonna need a soldering iron, which is up there in the top corner of your video and some motor spray to, to clean off the bottom of the BEC and wherever you're going to adhere it to. I found the perfect spot to mount the BEC right here on top of the servo. First thing I did was I cleaned off the servo with some motor spray and a paper towel, did the same for the BEC, then applied some two-sided tape and stuck it down in place. Then I ran the signal wires down into the receiver box. I plugged the one wire into a spare port I'm going to plug the other signal wire into another open port. Just make sure that you plug the wires in correctly so all the black wires, black or brown wires, are running along the one side. That's very important in getting the polarity right. So anyway, I'll toss the lid on that later. Let's go back up top. All right, now the next step is to basically just solder the wires in line with the battery terminal. So right here is where I'm going to cut and splice everything together. So the cut, just take an X-Acto knife. If you have a, a wire cutter, this works as well. I'll strip the insulation off. And what I like to do is just tighten up that braid and that helps make a nicer connection later. All right, next up we need to take our soldering iron and tin the wires. Now this is an important step in just getting a good soldering job. It's tinning the wires. And let the solder do the work. 
don't just sit there with the iron and, and really push on the wires. That doesn't do anything. Just let the solder flow into the wire. And that's really the secret to getting a really good soldering job. I'll grab my connector. We'll solder the leads together. Just like that. Once it cools, you can move on to the next one. So I've jumped ahead here and went and soldered the positive on, and now it's just time to slide the heat shrink in place and heat it up to shrink it down. Now you could use the side of your soldering iron or you could use a lighter. I'm gonna use a heat gun. There it is, the Castle Creations BEC 2.0 installed in this Axial Yeti project. It was really easy to do. Just needed a soldering iron, few shop tools and just a little bit of time. Now I'm going to head outside and see what it does as is. I'm not going to program anything yet. I want to get a feel for what it does for the servo as is. Then if I feel needs a little bit of power, I'm going to grab that castle link over to my computer and tune it just a little bit. You don't want to increase your power too much because again, you got too much power, creates too much heat, and that could prematurely wear your servo. Hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, we've got a lot more to come, and if you haven't subscribed, please hit that button below. And if you have a comment, throw it down there too. We'd love to see it.